Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Building Science Education Series. I'm Paul Torsellini, and in this episode, we're going to revisit our calculation of our value through a wall. Let's go back to our example of calculating our values for multiple heat pathways through a stud framed wall and turn this into a spreadsheet. An example spreadsheet is shown on the screen. We have inputs here at the top such as the spacing of the studs, the thickness of the stud cavity, and the stud width. So in this case, we're going to start with a two by four wall spaced 16 inches on center, and we're going to fill that wall cavity with fiberglass insulation. Now, remember that two by four studs aren't really two inches by four inches. The actual dimensions are one and a half inch by three and a half inches which is what I've entered into the spreadsheet. Looking at the calculation table we used in an earlier episode, we can see we have two continuous layers on the inside of the wall, the interior air film coefficient and the drywall. We then have two different pathways where heat can flow through the wall, the first pathway being through the stud and the second pathway being through the fiberglass insulation. Then beyond that, we have two continuous layers on the outside of the wall, the plywood sheathing followed by the exterior air film coefficient. The green cells contain values that I've entered. So these include constants like the R value per inch for drywall, as well as variables that we have entered for this example, like the thickness of each layer of the wall. And then the yellow cells contain that Excel calculated based on the formulas that I entered. These formulas are the same calculations we did by hand in our other episode. From this, we can see that the overall R value for the wall is 11.63, the same as our earlier episode. The advantage of the spreadsheet is we can make changes quickly and see how it impacts the overall R value. As an example, we can move from a 16 inch stud spacing to a 24 inch stud spacing. That reduces our framing factor from a little over 9% down to about 6%. Remember that these framing factors were the lowest possible framing factor we could have for this configuration, as windows and doors also need additional studs in order to support them, as well as a top plate and a bottom plate. Lumber is a poor insulator compared to the insulation. So you can see when we change the stud spacing from 16 to 24 inches, we reduce the amount of wood in the wall, allowing more insulation. And as a result, we went from an R value of 11.63 and increased it to just over 12. More typical would be a framing factor closer to 15%. Making that change reduces the R value to a 10.87 or a 6% decrease. That would increase the heat transfer by 6% through the wall. Now, where we can make some real change is making the wall thicker. So instead of a two by four wall, which has a thickness of three and a half inches, let's say that we now have a two by six wall, which has a five and a half inch cavity. That one move took our wall from an R value of 11.63 up to an R value of 16.85. That's a pretty substantial difference. It's an increase of almost 45% for the R value. We can further increase the R value of the wall by adding some insulation to the outside of the building. Maybe we'll add one inch of foam insulation to the outside, which is R5 per inch. Making this change increases the overall R value of the wall to 22.39. That's a significant increase from where we were a minute ago, even with the five and a half inch wall cavity. It's almost two times the R value we had in our original wall construction. Doubling the R value of the wall will cut the heat transfer through the wall in half, which also results in a reduction of energy consumption to heat and cool the building. So that concludes our spreadsheet example for calculating our values. I encourage you to use examples like this and to create a spreadsheet to help you decide how to design your walls. 
A key piece we learned from this process is to add continuous insulation, such as the exterior foam board. Another advantage of continuous materials is that it makes the envelope much tighter, reducing infiltration, a topic we will cover in a different episode.